the way most people build their websites is about to completely change. I'm going to show you two things. First, we'll look at Elementor. What's the first thing you do when you're building out a layout? You choose a structure, which is typically a section and these things called columns. And if you want, there's also something here called intersections. This is how you build your layouts and it is going goodbye for good. Here is a brand new beta version of Elementor that should be pushed out to everyone sometime, probably April of 2022 and guess what the sections the columns they are all completely gone and now you have one thing and it's called a container you'll see right here we have a container and when you want to go and add a new section it looks like it's columns and sections but it's not it is just containers and inner containers and these unlock a ton of flexibility, performance, so many good things for your website. This is Elementor. Now let me show, show you the WordPress block builder. Maybe you've heard of a WordPress theme called Astra. It just so happens to be the number one theme of all time. It actually is. This thing is on millions of websites. Well, they released this blog post celebrating and announcing their 13th birthday as a company. And there was a little bit of information tucked all the way down here. Ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg will soon be Spectra. And here they are announcing that this product, which is the most used block builder plugin for WordPress, it is going to be completely redone from the ground up it's going to be named Spectra. It's the closest thing, the hand coding that there is. And I just so happen to have a copy of it. And I'm going to show you that as well, because just like Elementor, they are going to get rid of the whole concept of a section in a row and a column. And they're doing the same exact thing. And they are going to have containers as well. So you just go to the block inserter and it's right here container and you click on it and it looks like it's a section and some columns in it, but it's not, it's containers. So if I wanted to choose one of these uh, container layouts, say this one right here, it's pretty typical. You can see over here on the right, this is a container and inside of it, let me show you, these are child containers just like an Elementor. This is a brand new layout system that's coming to the millions of users of Elementor and the hundreds of thousands of users of Spectra. Well, right now it's called Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg, but that's going to be changing to Spectra. This is coming to both of these products next month and both of these are actually completely free so all their users are going to be using this new container system this is great news for you if you want to have a lightweight super fast website without any compromises you have a lot to be excited for and i'm going to show you how to use them in this video. Now the three main benefits of these containers and technically they're called Flexbox containers. So you might hear that word thrown around Flexbox. So these Flex, flex, flex box containers have three main benefits. The first main benefit is you're gonna have a more optimized page layout for each of the pages that you build. And I'll show you that. Number two, it's gonna greatly reduce the DOM size. Now, DOM is a very techy kind of term. Basically, it's a word that means the amount of code that is on your website to make it look the way that it does. And over the last couple of years, Elementor has received a ton of criticism for it being bloated code. Well, this is gonna drastically reduce it. If you've ever put your website URL in one of those page speed testers and you looked at the results, you might have seen it's a excessive DOM size. Well, this is going to get rid of that or reduce the likelihood of that coming up when you do a speed test on your website. And lastly, you're going to get better responsive controls. There are some things you cannot do with the row and the uh, column layout as it relates to making your layout look a specific way on a tablet and on a mobile device but you don't no longer have that rigid structure. It's going to be so much more flexible, hence the term flex box. Now, some of you, I want you to resist the urge to jump down into the comments and say, Adam, what are you talking about? This has been around for years. 
Yes, I already know this. There are some page building tools that are a little bit more performant, but they do sacrifice some usability that have been using Flexbox containers forever since day one of those products being out. However, this coming to Elementor, which has more users than all those other builders combined, it's a big deal. So right now I'm going to show you some of the ins and outs and some of the settings that you want to be aware of because they're totally different for this in order for you to get the most out of it. And I'm also going to show you some things that aren't so obvious that you probably don't know about yet that is going to dramatically reduce the amount of DOMs on your website or the size of the DOMs on your website. Let's get into it. Now, most of what I'm going to show you it, or all of it's pretty much going to be in Elementor, uh, but I'll come back into the WordPress block builder here so you can see the settings are exactly the same. So if you know how to do it in one, you're going to know how to do it in the other. Now, most people are are going to probably just use this how they're used to using this as basic sections and columns, although those are technically not what they are. They're going to be these containers and they have separate settings, uh, but a lot of people are just going to end up using it that way. So let me first show you a way of using it that you might not realize. So here is a typical section, right, for some features. And here's an icon box, and I have a grid here of three of these icon boxes. Now, if you wanted to accomplish this style of section before this container system, you would have to create a section, and you would have to create three columns in it and put one of these in each columns, essentially creating a ton of code that gets outputted on the front of the website. You no longer have to do that with Flexbox. Let me show you how easy this is to create. So instead of choosing a three column Flexbox, I'm going to just choose one because one is all I need. And then let's go ahead over here and let's drop in an icon box. So here it is. It's an icon box. I'm going to drag and drop it there. That's great. But you know what? Let's duplicate this three time and watch what happens. Do it again. Watch what happens. You're saying, Adam, that's not what I wanted to happen. I wanted a grid. Let me introduce you to Flexbox settings and you're going to see how we're going to be able to take these three icon boxes and make them go side by side like this. So first, I'm going to go into the settings of this container and you can see here on the top left, it says edit container. Now, most of the settings are going to be found under where it says items. Let's go ahead and inspect expand this. So we have some settings here that they're quite simple uh, and let's just get to know them together. We have direction. We have the alignment and we have justify content and then we have element gap. Let's see how these work. First, direction. Now, typically, um, before, when you were using the whole section column paradigm, whenever you would add new elements, it would look like this. They would just start going underneath each other. This essentially working in the direction down as a column. However, we can make this act as a row. When I hover over this arrow here, it says row. And when I click on it, Wow, look at that. I've just created a grid, a feature grid, without all this code and sections and complication. It was very simple using this flex box setting of direction. If I wanted to go back to column view, there it is. So that's the main difference there. Now we also have reverse row and reverse column. There's absolutely no reason to use this on desktop, but on a mobile device, if you wanted to reverse the order of these, which happens frequently, if you're having a bigger grid of featured uh, icon boxes like this, you on a mobile view would want to reverse the order of it. And so that's what these are there for. So you would just click right here and then you would choose the mobile or tablet and then you would reverse the order like that. Let's go back to the desktop view. Now you're probably saying, Adam, uh, but how do I add a little spacing? It's a little too close and it is a little too close. And that's right here. We've got something called elements gap. And by default, it's going to put a value of 20 in there, but we can make the gap whatever we want. And you see, as I'm expanding this and adding more space, these 
are there's more space being added in between the elements. Pretty cool, right? And it's just this one slider right here. Obviously, I'm just showing you this right now with these icon boxes but there's so many more applications for this. So if I wanted to do the same thing and create a single container, we haven't even gotten into multiple containers. Let's go ahead and drop a heading into it just like that. And we also might want to add something else. I don't know if I have any images on this site, but let's go ahead and just drop in an image. So we have an image and a heading. Let's actually change the order of that just like that. Now I've got that on the top. So this is all in a single container. Let me go ahead and change this image. That's kind of a small image, uh, but that's okay. So I'm still in this one single container. I would probably want the heading to the left and the image to the right in kind of a centering of the two. So let's go ahead and change the settings of the container for that. So I'm going to go back into my container settings. I'm going to go back to items. Now the direction I want is row and you can see we're getting there. Everything's kind of on the same line, but I don't like the spacing at all. So let's go ahead and first look at the alignment of it. Now these icons actually change depending if you're in the row mode or the column mode. See how they kind of flip around like that? Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and center. So let's see, this one isn't what we want, but this right here, did you see what happened? The heading went into the center, the, uh, the uh, vertical centering right there. Pretty cool. But now you might be thinking these are too close together. This doesn't look right. Well, that's where justify content comes into play. By default, everything's here on the far left. This puts everything in the center. This puts everything on the right. This separates them all the way like that. And this kind of squeezes them in a little bit more and this squeezes it in even more. I'm able to create layouts like this with no columns, just a single container. Now you can also use it the traditional way. So if I wanted to say create this layout and I would choose this. So now what we have, we have a parent container and you can kind of see right here on the right in the navigator, we have a parent container and two children containers. So we can do the same thing. Uh, I can put a heading in this um, container and then I could go here and I can put an image in this other container here on the right. And I can go into the parent containers settings. I can click on items and I can change the uh, centering there. So you can see now my headings moved into the middle and you can play around with these very simple to get the exact look that you want. Now, each of these are in a container of its own. So you can see right here, we have this icon and when I click on it, now I can access the settings just for this particular container and you can see those right there. Now what some Elementor users don't realize is the WordPress block builder it's pretty much exactly the same thing as Elementor. You start with a container. Now, if you're going to use Spectra, uh, which is going to be completely free, and I'm able to do the same thing here. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and show you how that works. I can click on the block inserter here, this plus on the top left, click on container, looks exactly like Elementor does, right? Uh, and let's see, um, I'm going to do the single container uh, like this, and I'll choose that. And then I will use these icon boxes. So I'll go like this and I'll type icon and I'll choose, I'm sorry, info box. There it is. And I can click on it and then duplicate, click on it and then duplicate. And so it, this is exactly what I just showed inside of Elementor. Let's pull that list view up. Let me click into the container right here. And guess what? Over on the right, we have those same settings under here where it says flex properties. I expand it. I want it to go as a row right here. You see that? And um, actually everything else is uh, perfectly fine. If I wanted to change the spacing between it, I just click here where it says style, here where it says spacing, and it's right here underneath, I believe it's column gap. Yeah, there it is. You can see I'm adding in some gap there and it's spreading 
and it's shrinking. There really isn't that much difference between Elementor and using the block builder, especially when you're using Spectra, which comes with this container block, as well as all the various blocks that you're used to using inside of Elementor. Now, Elementor does, it's gonna ship when this comes out with something extra for users that have already built pages using the old section and the column format. Let me show you how that's going to work. So here is a traditional section. And when I click on it, you can see it now says edit section. Um, and this is all using section and columns the old school way. Um, and you can see there's an option here. It says convert to container. Now, when you click this, it makes a duplicate of this, but it's using containers and it puts it underneath it. So it doesn't destroy anything. It's non-destructive. Watch, I'm going to click on convert and then there it is. But there's some problems. Obviously you can tell this is going to need some tweaking. It does save you some time of converting it into containers, but you can see there is some spacing issues, some styling issues. So you might need to spend a minute or two per duplicate or converted section in order to get it to look right. And some of them don't do the greatest job so let me click on this one and do a convert and you can see it's uh, got some spacing spacing issues for sure uh, this one is probably going to be closer let me convert this and you can see this, uh, we really just like have to center this a button like that. And then we have to tweak the spacing of this. And uh, we could probably pretty much get the same exact look with minimal effort. So I hope you see how this is going to be a big deal. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to make your websites load faster, be much more optimized. And it's going to be there for everyone. This is going to be kind of like the new standard of how things are done. And I couldn't be more excited. Hey, I need you to do something for me right now. And that's to give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions about Flexbox, you can ask down in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.